Hi, my name is Kevin, and welcome to my final project for my digital rhetoric class. This video will primarily focus on theater as it exists through the lens of rhetoric, as well as how it operates under the parameters of digital rhetoric. Digital rhetoric, as we have come to learn throughout the course of this graduate class, is a multifarious construction that included aspects of interface, templates, hypertext, the World Wide Web, and other technologies. We have also come to understand digital as that which refers to our fingers, our digits, as a way of meaning making. I will therefore explore digital rhetoric and theater as it intersects with technology and that which is made by our digits. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Let's get started. I find it important to first connect theater to multimodality, as that was our class's route into discovering digital rhetoric and literacy. The new London group offers the most cohesive definition of multimodal in that it relates all the other modes in quite remarkably dynamic relationships. These other modes include, but are not limited to, the visual, oral, spatial, gestural, and linguistic. Multimodal ensembles make use of these various ways of meaning making in their compositions. A comic book, for instance, is multimodal in that it primarily uses both the linguistic and the visual in its composition. Through the course of this class, I've come to view theater as a multimodal ensemble as well. In fact, theater as it is defined by German scholar Hans T. Lehmann is not to be defined as a dramatic process, but as one that is corporeal, scenic, musical, auditory, and visual in space and time. This definition adds on new modes, like that of the corporeal and temporal. In directing postmodern theater, John Whitmore finds other modes which theater communicates through, a graphic I will show right now. As you can see, alongside the visual, linguistic, and spatial, Whitmore includes olfactory, which relates to our sense of smell, and the tactile, or that which we can touch. This table also provides the different ways in which these rhetorics can be deployed. Lighting, costume, and props communicate meaning primarily from the visual mode, while music and sound design communicate primarily through the auditory mode. W.B. Wharton provides further examples of how theater communicates meaning, particularly through realism and poetic theater. Theatrical realism takes spatial rhetoric as its main way of producing meaning. The picture frame of the proscenium not only circumscribes a dramatic world, it establishes the characteristic relation between actor, role, and eavesdropping audience through which its meanings are realized. It is through the mise-en-scene, or how the scenic environment is constructed, that realism primarily persuades, an inherently spatial rhetoric. Poetic theater, on the other hand, implies the text's direct intervention in the rhetorical ordering of realism, reclaiming the text's authority over the physical languages that construct the drama as theater. The linguistic mode is privileged in poetic plays like Yeats, T.S. Eliot, and Beckett. There are other specific examples of theater which use one mode as a primary form of communication. The mind utilizes gestural rhetoric, whether it be objective, corporeal, or subjective, in order to make meaning. A way that olfactory may be used is in props, signifying pot. Strawberry leaves may be smoked in order to persuade the audience into believing that the character is smoking a joint. Theater can thus be seen as a multimodal ensemble of meaning, with some genres privileging certain modes over others, but still using a variety of ways in which to communicate and persuade the audience. In establishing theater as multimodal, we can begin to look at it through the lens of the digital. I will be taking the definition of digital from Angela M. Haas's article, Wampum as Hypertext. Digitalis in Latin, which typically denotes of or relating to the fingers or toes, or a coding of information. John Whitmore describes codes as culturally derived signs that have been assigned meanings that are understood by the inhabitants of a given society. Here, code isn't pertaining to technology per se, but through semiotics as a way of communication. Haas connects wampum belts to coding, as the various beads and spaces in between represent a sort of story inherent to this indigenous culture that made the artifact. Theater, for Whitmore, primarily uses three codes. 
cultural, theatrical, and individual performance. Cultural codes are rules or guidelines that govern the operation of a society and its culture. Theatrical codes are accepted and understood norms of operation that allow the theater to function as a special aesthetic place. Uh, for example, the suspension of disbelief and the fourth wall. Individual performance codes are unique rules guiding the understanding of an individual performance, which makes theatrical rhetoric context specific. All of these codes are at play during a theatrical performance and are deliberated through the actors, the crew, the designers, the director, and the audience. If digital can be understood as a coding of information, then the theater can be understood as such through the multifarious ways in which information is coded during a performance. If this is the case, how can theater operate digitally, as we have come to learn what digital means? Now that we have defined theater as both multimodal and as digital, we can begin to look at ways in which theater operates in a digital space, both with technology and as it refers to our fingers. In Susan Broadhurst's article, Neuroaesthetics, Techno Embodiment, she argues that digital practices serve as both critique of social and political conditions and as agents having an indirect effect upon them. The digital does what all avant-garde art aspires to do. It is an experimental extension of the socio-political and cultural themes of an epic. When the corporeal manifestation of a body has reached its limit in both communicating through multimodal means, the body builds its own instruments and projects around itself a mediated world. Motion capture is one of the examples that she provides. The movement of a body is captured and the resulting skeleton has an animation applied to it. Mocap is heavily used within a video game context in order to present a realistic performance within a virtually constructed world one that doesn't materially exist outside of its relationship to the actors and designers that created it. Groups that utilize other digital modes include Optic, who utilize electronic sound technology for real-time interaction. Broadhurst describes them as engaging three primary creative elements, live action, body, space, and time, live and digital sound, and live video. Digital tools like MIDI and Open Sound Control, or OSC, are used often, the latter being a protocol that allows real-time control by means of gestural devices of computer-synthesized processes. For Broadhurst, the digital has no inherent referring meanings unless these are added, in which the theatrical performance provides meaning for modes that operate digitally. Sarah Bay Chang offers a different connection between theater and the digital through a lens of biopolitics and social media. In analyzing Marshall McLuhan's work, from cliché to archetype, the advent of satellites have fundamentally changed the way in which humans perform in society. Quote, Since Sputnik and the satellites, the planet is enclosed in a man-made environment that ends nature and turns the globe into a repertory theater to be programmed. By living inside this proscenium arch of satellites, public spaces are now seen as role-playing areas. Mass communication has effectively turned the world into a theater space where we are continually being surveyed through public and private audiences. Steve Dixon offers yet another perspective into theater as it performs digitally. He takes a specific definition to digital performance which concerns the conjunction of computer technologies with the live performance arts, as well as gallery installations and computer platform-based net art, CD-ROMs, and digital games where performance constitutes a central aspect of either its content or form. For example, interactive installations that prompt visitors to perform actions rather than simply watch a screen and point and click. He takes a magnifying glass to theater and cyberspace, specifically hypertext narratives, video art webcasts, and interactive theater performances. Dixon cites Michael Joyce's Afternoon, Stuart Malthrop's Victory Garden, Carolyn Geyer's Quibbling, and Shelley Jackson's Patchwork Girl as more well-known examples of the hypertext narrative. And cyberspace could be something like Guillermo Gomez Peña and Roberto Cifuentes the ethno-cyberpunk trading post and curio shop on the electronic frontier, in which both performers improvised over suggestions made by online visitors. Both Gomez Peña and Cifuentes have worked together since the 1990s, where they embarked on what they termed 
techno resquache art, which is defined as a new aesthetic that fuses performance art, epic rap poetry, interactive television, experimental radio, and computer art, but with a Chicano-centric the Chameleons group performed along similar lines in Chameleons 3, Net Congestion. They worked in an empty theater space, quote, with three stage areas, each area backed by a giant video projection screen, running specially created visual imagery and receiving incoming IRC comments. They would improvise dialogue and action as suggested by the online audience through these comments. For Dixon, the unique interactive potentials of cyber theater transform the performer-audience relationship as well as the normal spatial aspects of theater performance. Spatial rhetoric is fundamentally changed in cyber theater, expanding what Worthen posits as the rhetoric of theatrical realism, as the proscenium arch is now a bezel on a computer, tablet, or smartphone screen. If we do use digital as that which refers to our digits, then I think there's a compelling argument that puppetry as a theatrical art form is a digital mode of communication. In Chiara Capoletto's article, The Puppet's Paradox, a puppet is understood as a figure of human passivity, which it expresses analogically through its inert and tame body. She also draws a connection between what we traditionally know as a puppet and other material and inorganic bodies, such as dolls, mannequins, robots, and androids. If we are to consider a puppet as a digital medium, then it must offer a code, and it must be created through human digits, and for Capoletto, this is so. Like how the theater operates in different codes, the puppet operates as a code for humanity. Quote, the puppet needs man as its motor agent, but most of all, it needs to be compared to man in order to gain from the contrast that is thus produced by its own specific artificial expressivity. Without man as a referent, the puppet lacks inherent meaning. This coded relationship does not end in its performance, but also how a puppet is used by a puppeteer. For, it is not the artifact that acts as prostheses to the puppeteer, it is puppeteer who acts as prostheses to the artifact to whom he lends his fingers. Puppets make meaning through the extension of their puppeteer's digits, therefore making puppets a digital rhetoric analogous to the wampum belts that Angela Haas presents. As we have discussed over the course of this video, theater and rhetoric have intrinsic ties not just through multimodality, but also through specifically digital means. Theater is multimodal in its rhetoric in that it employs a variety of persuasions upon the audience, some modes being privileged over others. Theater is digital insofar as we define it as coding information across multiple platforms, that of overarching culture, theatrical coding, and the codes of individual performance. Finally, we looked at theater as it operates on a digital front, both utilizing technology and through the literal meaning of digital as it refers to digits. I have listed my sources in the video description below, as well as other digital and cyber theater performances that I have found through the course of making this video. Until next time.